And so the mixtapes was popping, everything was great, and that 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 whole run lasted till about ninety nine, and then the problem was, um, you know, other DJs started doing it as well, but they they were taking it to a a more competitive level with yeah. the record labels. Okay, so then if we could be a hundred percent honest, it was Baby Blue. <laughs> that came out with the CDs, right? And that's when everything changed. Yes, you understand. So they did. They were great. Yeah, you know, in in terms of b- building up their fan base. But what they were doing is they were um, basically making compilations. You know, with the with their flavor. Yeah. You know, with Kid Cut doing his thing and and however they mixed. I've never listened to a Baby Blue tape in my life because I've never needed. But the thing is, I never needed to. Right. Okay. So as a, as a guy, they never had music that I wasn't going to have. Got and you. so. Uh, it, the purpose of listening would it wouldn't appeal to me, right? So were you guys competitors? What in a friendly way? Okay, right? we were. Oh, we would. I mean, you competed with everybody. Like me yeah. and X were competitors. Me and Scratch would have been competitors. Mm-hmm. Blue would. Have, it's just we were all competing for the same Got space, right? Mm-hmm. But we weren't directly. Compet- competing, so when to speak. When I see right? Mastermind, it's on on site. No, there was right. none of that. You know what I mean? Like maybe they had that relationship with certain people. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't beef with nobody. Yeah. Like I felt that I had established myself to a certain degree, and it's like even if we were playing the same event, like th- there were instances where. Um, you know, DJs would catch feelings because they're supposed to be the undercard or you're yeah. the headline or whatever. And I'm like, they would get on and they want to spin all the records and blah, blah. I'm like, yo, B, I catch the same check at the end of the day. If you want to go shine and wreck the party because, you know, when yeah. 12 o'clock comes around, I'm not going to play. Yeah. If you spun every tune, I'll be like, keep going. Mm-hmm. I'm good. And then you're going to have to deal with the promoter because I'll tell the promoter, I'd be like, this was the warm up guy and look what he did. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for me, I wasn't a um, open format guy. Like when you look at crews like Blue, yeah. you know they had an in-house soca guy and reggae guy. They had their R and B guy and their hip hop guy. I was pretty much a hip hop R and B guy. Yeah. So if I got booked for a party, that's why I was supposed to be there. Whereas you know you look at a, you look at a genius like Scratch who can play every genre of music. So he could literally play mm-hmm. from door open yeah. to party done, and no one else would really have to touch. A turntable crazy um, mind you that's not how it worked back then he mm-hmm. actually you know like red flame would be there king turbo would be there or whatever yeah. and they would it, we would switch it out but mark is the type of guy that he could literally do it do it on his own and so yeah so going back to the mixtapes blue started making cds yeah and so the problem with that is you're going from a medium that you know record labels don't quite feel you're you're encroaching on their territory yeah. to now putting out CD quality music that is now not being licensed Mm -hmm. and consumers are gravitating towards this because it's dope. Yeah. But, you know, because those guys were like record labels at the time, all they cared about was dance music compilations and house compilations. They weren't putting out hip hop compilations. They weren't putting out, you know, uh, they weren't finding the Canadian guys to put hip hop together and doing licensing and stuff it was you know much music volume 4 and it was yes. Chris Shepard and MC Mario and guys like that right yeah. and so Blue came out they started doing these mixtapes and, and good for them they got a name for themselves people are hyped about them they start going into HMVs and start saying hey you got, you guys sell the baby blue tape then what happens is the HMV guys then go to the record labels and say yo people keep coming in here and asking about baby blue and now you've put it on the, the record label radar yeah <laughs> and that's when the record labels are like investigating and then they're like yo you guys are putting out CDs and you're not licensing and then the much musics and all the people that actually have to pay for licensing they're like well how come they can do it and okay. and sell this stuff and we have to pay and blah blah so it turned into a big shit show and so in mid 99 to the late 99 the same thing that happened in the states with um, the pirate music getting shut down there yeah. same thing happened up here and so that's when the mixtapes kind of died off but that in turn was a bit of a blessing in disguise because then what happened was um y- you know we had already established there was at that between you know between 93 and and you know where we were cur- at that current time mm-hmm. 2000 99 2000 um the record label started developing uh, black music departments, urban yes. departments. Yes. And so we had certain guys within certain companies that were like, okay, look, 
we want to we know we can't do mixtapes anymore we want to make it legit and we want to sign you um to put out an album okay. so now they're like okay we want to do what those mc marios and chris shepherds are doing but we want to do it with you because you guys i guess you guys basically it was almost like they reverse engineered you guys proved that listen this thing works mm. so then now we just got to go through the proper channels and actually make money together as a company See, and i never really looked at it that way but it's very similar to what's happening now where there's artists that are out here using all the tools available to them via the internet and social media mm. already creating a fan base and a hype and then a record label comes along and says okay you have something yeah we can help you take it to the next level let's exactly. do it together yes hey, right hey. right yeah. they have the machine to push you through right and so very similar to you know that concept is what you know virginie and i mm. who eventually is who i signed with they that was their idea so they were going to sign blue mm. to do the the Poppier R and B, not okay. poppier, but the jiggy, the jiggy stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to be the hip hop guy. Yeah. And then we would just license the music, uh, just like everybody else, and we would yeah. put these albums out. You know what happened was, um, Universal offered Blue a, a a nicer deal, I guess, or something, and they kind of snaked Virgin EMI. Yeah. And instead of signing with Virgin EMI, they went with Universal. And then what happened was, um, and Universal had a huge um, catalog for urban music, right? This they, is they Universal were, one of the, we're talking about. We're yeah. talking about 99, mm -hmm. you know, Universal Music. If you go back to them days, they had a huge, huge chunk of urban music. Yeah. And as much as you had Sony as well, and you had, you know, Warner, and you had Virgin, Universal really was the top of the pile there. Mm -hmm. And they refused to license any music to us because at now we're competing. Yeah. They have a black urban compilation they're going to put out, and Virgin has a black urban compilation that they're going to put out. But we're not going to give you any of the records you want because mm -hmm. we're going to save them all for ours, right? And so that kind of fucked us on our side. Mm -hmm. And so we had to kind of rethink what we were going to do with the album. And so, you know, uh, again, as far as cassettes were concerned, I stopped at 48. That's okay. where we ended. Mm -hmm. And then the the concept that we came up with was tape 49 was going to set up volume 50, volume 50 being the album. So this was all brainstormed. We all yeah. sat in a room. We figured out what are we going to do? And they liked the idea of continuing the concept of the mix. You did 48 tapes. Yeah. No one's done that. Blah, 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 blah. Let's continue that. So tape 49, basically what we did. And, and I was known for really heavily supporting you know, Canadian artists that I believed in yes. and helping develop careers for certain, you know, Socrates, Jacques Claire, Cardi, Julie Black, all these artists, they all uh, in some capacity came through me, my tapes, my shows, mm -hmm. whatever. And so the concept for Tape 49, it was called The Setup. And we basically got the cream of the crop of uh, Canadian hip hop artists at the time. And we had them freestyle over... Uh, over beats that we had access to okay. and um, put out a, a, a tape of <coughs> 20 tracks or uh, I don't remember how many but that is in and of itself people talk to me like they that's an iconic kind Beyond. of mixtape right Beyond. so this podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusica.com